فاستغفروا ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم فان خير الحديث من كتاب الله وخير هدي هدي محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلال وكل ضلاله في النار اما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمه الله تعالى وبركاته يقول سبحانه وتعالى في القران العظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واذ قال ابراهيم ربي ارني كيف تحيي الموتى قال اف قال اولم تؤمن قال بلى ولكن ليطمئن قلبي قال فخذ اربعه من الطير فصرحن اليك ثم جعل ثم اجعل على كل جبل منهن جزءا ثم ادعوهن ياتيك سعيا واعلم ان الله عزيز حكيم in the name of allah the beneficent the most merciful we bear witness that there is nothing to be worshiped except allah and we bear witness that prophet muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam is indeed the messenger of allah he is the seal of all prophets prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the embodiment of the quran aisha radhiyallahu an said kana khuluquhu alquran she said the prophet's character his means of expression himself his character the essence of who he was as a person she said he was the quran so we know from the life of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he is the perfect example of what it means to be the perfect servant of allah living out your divine purpose as a human being for the purpose in which you were created we bear witness that whom allah has bestowed upon them his grace his love his mercy and his divine guidance that nothing can misguide them and we bear witness that whom allah allows to go astray there is nothing or anyone that can guide them to the path of truth as we have come to know the path of islam meaning total submission to the will of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my respected brothers and sisters i want to draw your attention to surah al-baqarah which is chapter 2 of the quran verse 260 and when you have a chance later on today i would highly recommend inshallah that if you have a chance go back look at the verse study the verse even if you study the verse for the whole week study it very profound allah says in the quran bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim wa if qala ibrahim rabbi arni kayfa tuhyi al-mawt allah ta'ala says abraham said unto allah verily abraham said o oh my lord show me let me see how you give life to the dead how how do you give life to the dead by what means what is the process that you use as the life giver and the provider of all provisions what is the mechanism that you utilize to bring life to the dead now all of us who are sitting here we were once dead i hope you realize that There's another verse in the Quran where Allah says, "Kayfa takfuruna billah?" How do you deny the very existence of Allah and you were dead? I gave you life, you will die again and until Allah is your final return. We are the living dead because kullu nafsin da'iqat al-mawt. All of us that are living, we are destined to die. But we don't live fearing death because death is a creature that Allah has created. We use death as a source of inspiration to live our best life. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al-Mulk, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Tabarak al-ladhi bi yadihi al-mulk wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir, alladhi khalaq al-mawt wal hayata liyabluwakum ayyukum ahsanu 'amala. Glorified, exalted, blessed is Allah who has created life and death 
who in Allah's hands is full control and power over everything. Allah has power over everything. Nothing escapes Allah's control, nothing. Even the will of the human being is governed based upon the divine restrictions that Allah has placed on the will of man and woman. So Abraham in the Quran asked a profound question. How do you give life to the dead? Great question. Because in the absence of life, nothing really matters. If you were dead, you wouldn't worry about rent. You wouldn't worry about health care. You wouldn't worry about a house. You wouldn't worry about food. You wouldn't worry about anything. Because in death, what you need in life has no value. So Abraham asked the profound question. How do you give life to the dead? Allah asked Abraham a profound question. He says, Is it that you don't believe? It's a rhetorical question. Allah knows Abraham as his friend is a believer. But Allah says, Is it that you do not believe? He says, I believe, but that my heart may be given tranquility. Some things in life, when you see them, you want to understand why. Sometimes if you experience a negative betrayal in life by someone you trust and you love, it bothers you at night. You say, well, why? Why did you do that? Sometimes you raise your sons, you raise your daughters, you work, you pay the bills, you do all that you can do, and they deviate from the path, and you stay up saying, why? Or how did that happen? Because as human beings, we have a natural inclination to want to know the why and the how. So Allah, he asked Ibrahim, is it that you do not believe? He says, for certainty, I believe. However, my heart needs tranquility. Now, what I want you to do is pay attention here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse, he does not explain to Ibrahim how he gives life to the dead. Because even if Allah explained it to us as human beings, you wouldn't even comprehend. I want you to imagine, you take a kid in the classroom right now, and you teach a kid that's five years old, geometry and the highest science of coding and the mathematics that associate with computer. Even though you're telling him all the truths, his mind can't conceive what you're talking about because he's not on that level. So you can tell him all the truths that he wants to hear. He will not comprehend. There's some things in life, they're not made to be understood. They're made to accept. How do you understand death? Why is it that we have to die? Why? All of us would love longevity. All of us would love to live forever. Why is it that a child can be born and die at birth and another child can be born and live for 90 years? Why? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did something magnificent as a lesson in life for the living. He never answered Abraham's question of how. But he gave him a demonstration. He told him, you take the bird, you kill it. Then you're going to put a section of that bird on the four mountains. Then, pay attention, pay attention, then... You're going to call it to life. He never explained how. He gave Abraham a living example of the power of calling things into existence from the power of the word. Because words are powerful. Words are powerful. You can go on social media right now and say something very negative and it'll have a negative consequence all over the country, depending who you are. But Abraham was given the ability to see with his own eyes an example of how Allah gives life to the dead. Now, why do I say that? In America, this is a great land. It's a magnificent country with endless possibilities for the cultivation 
of the hearts and the minds, first and foremost, of the American Muslim community. But it also is a beautiful landscape for being an example of human excellence in the eyes of the American people to inspire them to see the majesty of Allah, the majesty of the Quran, and the beauty of Islam. But they need to live an example. You see, you can tell people about Islam. It sounds nice. You can tell Muslim children about Islam. It sounds nice. The stories of the Prophet, peace be upon him, they sound beautiful. But we need a living example. We need today in the gates of North America, we need living examples of Muslims who believe in Allah, believe in the Prophet, and are prepared to walk in the footsteps of the Prophet and demonstrate human excellence with courage and conviction unapologetically being Muslim, unafraid of the consequences of speaking truth, and willing to risk everything in the pursuit of what is most pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Risk everything. Give it all for the sake of Allah. What does Allah say in the Quran? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul inna salati wa nusaki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen. لا شريك له وبذلك أمرت وأنا أول المسلمين قل إن الصلاة say my prayers my sacrifice my life and my death all of it is for Allah the Lord of the worlds and I have been commanded to be of those who surrender in America the missing link for the rise of Islam in its truthful most purest manifestation is Muslims who believe and trust in Allah and fear no man. Because if you are afraid, fear will cripple all of your dreams and aspirations. If you are afraid to fail, you have already been defeated. Because here, brothers and sisters, do you know sometimes your greatest defeats are moments of Allah's greatest victories? Sometimes Allah will let you experience of defeat to humble you so that when he elevates you, you realize it wasn't because of you. It was because of Allah. So Allah is showing Abraham the power that he can invest in the human being to call into existence even things that are dead, that by Allah's grace, the human being has the endless power and possibility to even give life to a dead force. Jesus did the same thing. So here it is, Muslims in America, I want to leave you with this. In order to be successful, you have to have a level of conviction. And you have to have the willingness to give everything. You know what people love by two things. Where they spend their money, when they spend their time. Look, you get married, you fall in love. Your wife, you love her so much. She go to the jewelry store, she put on a diamond ring. She like it. She's smiling. You can't afford it, but you love her and you want her to have it. You start thinking who you can borrow the money from, how much you can put on your credit card, who you can borrow money from, from the uncle, from this. You start thinking how to get the ring. Why? Because you love her. And you want to express your love for her by that which makes her happy in the moment. So guess what? You get the ring. You come home, demonstrating your love, you got the ring. She goes, oh, Abdullah, no. She means yes. But she goes, oh, no, you didn't. But yes. And you got the ring. You call your wife and you're at work. She says, Abdullah, what time are you finishing work today? You say 5 o'clock. It's 4.30. You hang up. She call you back at 4.37. She says, Salaam alaikum, Abdullah, when are you leaving? Honey, I told you, 5 o'clock. Okay, Salaam alaikum, I love you, I love you too. Hang up. She call you back at 4.47. Again. Salaam alaikum, you still there? Yes, I'm almost finished. She said, okay. Why is she calling you? Because when you love someone, you want to give them time. When you love someone, you want to spend your resources. Why? Because you demonstrate your love by your sacrifice. 
Love feeds on sacrifice and it commands everything. If you want to love Allah, you must be willing to give your all to answer his call. If you're not willing to give your life back to Allah who gave it to you free of charge, then the life that you live will be a life unfulfilled and you will be empty because you are not living out your divine purpose in pursuit of Allah's will, in pursuit of the manifestation of human excellence on any level. We are the best of all creatures of creation by Allah's grace. I get it from the Quran. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ Allah says we have created the human being in the best of malls. Of all creatures of creation, when Allah created Adam, he ordered the best of the most perfect of creatures, the angels, to bow unto Adam. Why? Because there is something unique about the life that has been given to the human being that is not manifested in any other creature of creation. For us in this life, the possibilities are endless. So why do I say that? As I came to this masjid, I was shocked. The magnitude of this center. Then I saw all these amazing children. You have 824 Muslim children in a school. I said, subhanAllah. Then you have 150 homes behind the masjid with Muslims. I said, subhanAllah. But all of this was part of the unseen. All that you see right now was in somebody's head. Somebody said, we need to have a masjid in Irving. Somebody said we need to have the parking lot. Somebody said we need to have a gym. Somebody said, you know what? We have to have the wudu station. Somebody said, you know what? We have to make sure we have a nice area for the children to learn. All of what you see in the physical was once of the unseen. Because the possibility of your thinking is endless. And if you believe and trust in Allah, anything is possible. That's why living in fear is contrary to the spirit of, belief, of a believer. What are we afraid of? I went to an event where they were talking about the struggle of the Muslims in India and what the Hindu twa are doing to the Muslims of India. But some of the brothers, they came to me and they said, brother, you know, we, 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 we can't take pictures and they can't see us here because if they see us, they will persecute us. See, that's their weapon. Their weapon is fear. If you live in fear, the enemy has already conquered you. You must live in the absence of fearing anything that anyone can do and trust and believe in Allah and know as the prophet said to Ibn Abbas that know for sure your destiny is sealed. We are people of destiny and divine faith. Whatever will happen will happen. But in the pursuit of our own greatness, and creating a legacy of greatness for our children in America, we have to be willing to sacrifice. So as I look at this community, I said, SubhanAllah, you mean to tell me in the gateways of America you have built this? But only you know this story. You have not shared this greatness with the world. Why? Why haven't you used your legacy of investing in the homeland of America and educating your children for the greatness of a bright future and living a moral life in the spirit of unity and love for the divine, trying to follow in the greatest footsteps of Muhammad Sallallahu Why haven't you shared your story with the American people as a source of inspiration and a demonstration of what is possible? Right now, if there's a terrorist attack, you know what the, the phone calls I get? I get calls from Muslims. Salam alaikum. Wallah, I hope it's not a Muslim. Brother, please tell me it's not a Muslim who did this. I say, brother, why do you care about that? You see, when they can make you feel responsible for the actions of any one person, that collectively we are all guilty, you become a prisoner of fear. There's nothing to fear. We are great people. We have a great prophet. We have the greatest book of revelation for the guidance of all of humanity and the possibilities for us to build an expression and a demonstration of the beauty of Islam is endless. But here's the question as I sit down. Do you believe? Do you believe? 
What we need right now in the Muslim world is people that believe. Because faith can take you where knowledge has never been. I meet a lot of Muslim scholars. They got a lot of book knowledge. Oh, they got lots of book knowledge. But look at their works, nothing. If you have memorized the Quran and you are a scholar of Islam, you cannot live in fear of anybody but Allah. And you must be an example to the community of what it means to be fearless in the pursuit of doing Allah's will and leave the consequences to Allah. So remember, as I sit down, Allah gave Abraham a demonstration. A demonstration of what? Of faith. The power of faith. Do you believe? أَقُولِ خَوْلِ هَذَا وَرَسْتَغْفِرِ وَلَكُمْ وَلِسَّارِ مَسْمِنْ كُلِي ذَمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا وَنْغَفُرُ الرَّحِيمِ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين Sayyidina wa Habibina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As I leave you, when Allah told Abraham, He said, call them. Call them. Call those elements of the bird. They will come to you with speed. My message to you, brothers and sisters, is many of us, you have to reprogram your thinking. I probably have about two minutes left. You have to reprogram this mind. The most powerful thing you can do as a Muslim is to weaponize your mind for greatness. Don't be the Muslims that live in defeat with your head down. I told the young people this and I'll tell you, I went to Dunkin Donuts. I saw this Muslim brother. You know, I can tell the Muslims when I see their faces. I said, brother, what's your name? He said, Mo. I said, brother, what's your name? He said, Mo. I said, brother, what did your mother name you? Uh-huh. I said, huh? Uh-huh. I said, huh? Uh-huh. I said, brother, what's your He said, Muhammad. I said, why you don't tell the American people your name is Muhammad? He said, brother, it's hard for the American people to say Muhammad. I said, brother, in America, they say Arnold Schwarzenegger and elect him the governor of California. What is in you that you're afraid to be who you are? What has come into your heart that you would be apologetic for who you are and blessed to be with the majesty of the Quran and the greatest prophet and human being for the guidance of all of humanity? What would make you feel ashamed of your faith and the dignity of your cultural heritage. Fear. When they take your mind from you, they take everything. So I'm coming here this weekend to do a great fundraiser that I believe will be the best one we've done. To build that third phase of a school that needs 14 additional classrooms. You have people online. And I'm gonna wrap it up. I know we have a time. But I want to tell you this, in this community right here, there are people that believe else this couldn't have been built. There's got to be one person in this community that can say, you know what, that project that's 2.5 million or 3 million, quietly, I'm going to give you the money, y'all build it, pay me back in Ramadan, pay me back. Because if your money is sitting in the bank, and it is, and it's doing nothing for you, and it's not, then where is your faith and your vision for your people that even in your death you can live to the greatness of the achievements of Muslim children? Because there's nothing greater you can invest in than the weaponization of the minds of Muslim children with Islamic education and Islamic environments. Sometimes when I go to a fundraiser, the parking lot has $4 million in luxury cars. The parking lot, $4 million in luxury cars and I'm begging people for $100,000. Why? Because they have no faith. Because guess what? With our faith, we reverse it. The parking lot would have $100,000 in cars, and we would, spend we would spend $4 million on education. So we have to cultivate our faith. May Allah give us the increase in faith, the increase in conviction. May he give us the vision to reprogram our minds for greatness, and may we walk in the shadow of the majesty of the Quran and the life teachings of Muhammad. Allahumma maqsim lana min khashyatika ma tuballughuna bihi jannatak 
ومن اليقين ما تحول به علينا مصائب الدنيا اللهم متعنا بأسماءنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا ما أحيتنا واجعله وارث منا واجعل ثعرنا على من ضرمنا وانصرنا على من عادانا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر حمنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يرحمنا ولا يخاف منك يا رب العالمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وأقينا عذاب النار اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك الكريم محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن يتبعه بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وآخر دعوة الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة